Uh, in addition to being a co-founder of IYT 30 years ago, which we're celebrating this year, he co-founded the first yoga program at a medical school at UCA, I don't know how many years, UCLA, but years ago. Co-founded the, or founded the corporate yoga program at the J. Paul Getty Museum. Now, some of you may know I have a background in economics, so I also know that Larry reached the creme de la creme of political and economic status by being the first yoga teacher to offer yoga classes at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Larry, they need you now more than ever here. Okay. More recently, he founded the Yoga Therapy RX uh, certification program at LMU, the first of its kind at a university. Yoga for the prime of life, people like me, especially for boomers, reaching the prime of life. And most recently, he was awarded the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award by Yoga in the title Yoga Hooligan, no, Yoga <laughs> Thilligan, I don't know what that means, by Dr. Nanda Bali Yoga Bhavanani. I can't pronounce his name, but he was the keynote presenter last year. There's much more, but now I want to introduce and bring up Larry Payne. One hell of a reception. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, my presentation tonight is where we've been and where we're going. And when you look at this timeline, which all of you have in your presentation, it's pretty fascinating. And I could spend my whole time just on these people. Now, what's really amazing about this, when you look up there, it says 1989 to 2019. But what a lot of people don't know is that the, the birth of the IAYT was in 1980, nine years previously. It took almost nine years to put it all together to get all the people and so forth. So I met Richard Miller. Where's Richard? There he is in Southern India at the Theosophical Society. So I came to Richard with the idea. And he said, well, you know, if we're going to do that, we're going to need a journal. He says, and I could be the founder of the journal. And I said, okay, well, I've sold some advertising space, so I can be the publisher, and I can run it. I'll be the president. <laughs> so the next eight and a half years, we sought out to make this happen, and that's how long it took, because we needed an international board and, and all those things. So this is how it all began. <laughs> that's really me. In 1978, I was a very successful advertising executive for McCall's Magazine. How many have heard of McCall's Magazine? All right. That business, the more you do, and I'm sure Anne Marie knows this, the more they pile on you. And there's no hours or anything like that. So after some time, I developed like a serious lower back problem. And I, did, I developed a nervous twitch in my eyes. So they had sales meeting for all the top producers. So I was going to this island. And we get there in the meeting. I look around and every person in that meeting, including the sales manager, <laughs> was twitching. <laughs> then they handed out these little baseball bats with a plaque on it that said, nice guys finish last. That was the moment I knew I was in the wrong profession. So when I came home, I talked to my running partner about it, Bill Grant. And he said, you know, my wife goes to this yoga class. Have you ever tried yoga? And I said, no. He says, come on. So I went to my first yoga class. 
And fortunately for me, she was an older, kind woman and a direct disciple of Indra Devi. And she helped Indra Devi write her first book, Yoga for Americans. And so I, I, I came up to her and I was watching people warm up. I said, ma'am, I can't possibly do those postures. Just do what you can. At the end, you'll be surprised. <laughs> so that's what I did. And at the end, she gave a 15-minute shavasana. And when I opened my eyes, I had no back pain. The twitch in my eyes was gone. And I had this overall sense of well-being. I felt like I'd been smoking something. It was like unbelievable. I was so high. And I have never looked back. Um, and so um, I came back to L.A. and I talked to my boss. And I said, I'm sorry, I quit. And they did something that is unheard of in advertising. They said, don't quit. I'll give you a sabbatical for a year. They wanted me. I said, okay. So I took my McCall's press pass, <laughs> and I bought a new recorder and a camera, and I set off. And I only had two things that were for sure. And one of them was a two-week healer's workshop at Findhorn. How many have ever heard of Findhorn? Oh, my God. And um, that was in Scotland. And the other was I booked a teacher training in India with Swami Vishnu in southern India because I wanted to be certified in India. So the Findhorn experience was wonderful. And also at that time, they would give you a list of people that have been to Findhorn that offer other Findhorn people a place to stay for a night or two. And that was a wonderful list to have with you when you're you know, traveling around the world. Um, and then I set off for Europe, and I was really looking for this man. And he wrote the first book I ever read on yoga. His name was Yasudian. Anybody heard of Yasudian? Yeah. He lived in a spiritual marriage with a woman named Elizabeth Heisch, who had a book called Initiation, and she also helped him write this book. So I went to Zurich. I went to his class. And after that, I met him, and he invited me to his home the next day. So I went to his house, and I was there for three hours. And when I left, I said, sir, what can you share with me that will help me to be a good yoga teacher? And he said the same thing that Deskachar, my teacher, told me. He said, be an example. And that's what I've tried to do for 40 years. Then I took off running, and that's what I looked like. I was traveling. That's in front of uh, Saraswati. And um, I took this picture of Swami Vishnu Divananda. And it was an incredible training. It was one month from 8 in the morning till 9 at night, just immersed in yoga philosophy, asana, meditation, chanting, all those things. It was a wonderful training. So after that, I went to the Theosophical Society. Anybody heard of Theosophical Society? Wow, I had the right audience here. If you join the Theosophical Society before you go to India, you can stay there for cheap. And it's nice to have a home base to be there. And so I did. But there was another reason why I went there. My mother told me that I had a real cousin. And he was a man who went to Berkeley to study to be a physicist, just like his father. And he took acid and dropped out and went to India. And he had been wandering the hills as a real sadhu for five years. So I went up to the director of the Theosophical Society. Her name is Norma Shastri. She was there forever. And I said, I'm looking for my cousin, Ray Angona. And she lifted her glasses and she said, you're his cousin? I said, yeah. She says, you'll find him in the library. He's got matted dreadlocks, granny glasses, sadhu robes, and he has B.O. <laughs> so I went in the library and there he was. 
Ray and Gona, and he had taken on a sadhu named Charan Das. His teacher was Charan Singh. And I went in the library, and I sat in front of him, and I said, Ray, I'm your cousin Larry from California. <laughs> and he looked at me and just stared, and then his eyes filled up with tears. And we went outside, and it was morning, and we started to talk until it got dark. And I didn't know that much about all the places in India. I just knew I wanted to meet Iyengar. And so he said, well, why don't you meet Iyengar's teacher? He's right over across the way, and his son. And he said, Indra Devi's here, and Sai Baba, and Rajneesh, and Kaivala Dhamma. And I didn't know any of these things. So unfortunately, Ray died young of food poisoning in India. But before he died, I introduced him to the Yoga Journal. And they came and met him and wrote their first spiritual guide to India based on his information. So after that, I went to visit BKS Iyengar. And there's a very famous story with Richard Miller and I about BKS Iyengar. <laughs> And so Richard and I were staying next to each other, and, and so Richard sends an aerogram to BKS Iyengar. Sorry, Richard. And he says, Dear Mr. Iyengar, I'm here observing different schools, and I'd like to come and observe your school. And BKS writes back, Nobody observes my school. I only want serious students. I suggest you go somewhere else. So Richard shows me this. So I right here, dear Mr. Iyengar, I've come from California to be at your feet. I would just do anything to be your student, and I'd like to interview you, and may I please come? He writes back, oh, please come. I don't know what I can teach you, but I'll try my best. So I went, and I was there for two weeks as his guest. And he started off, he dressed up for me and gave me an interview. And then he had three classes. He had level one, level two, and then he had a therapy class. His level two class warmed up with standing drop over back bends. That's how they warm up for the class. So for the next two weeks, I warmed up for a half hour in the bathtub before I got out because I was so sore. Unbelievable. And he took me in with his family, and he practiced seven or eight hours a day. They got up at 5.30, he would do three or four hours, and then he would do a second with two or three hours in, in the evening. Amazing practice. And his family was there, you know, with him. So another thing that really impressed me about him is, you know, once you become famous in India, the U.S. dollar is 60 to 1, at least. And so a lot of these teachers will only see Western people. But he and Deskachar and their family, they all saw the locals for the local price. So that was very impressive. So BKS Iyengar was a beautiful teacher and helped a lot of people. And uh, so many of us have studied you know, with him. So then I took off for Indra Devi. And um, Indra Devi was so kind to me. And she gave me an interview. And then she said, you know, you should meet Sai Baba. How many have heard of Sai Baba? Oh my God, this place is unbelievable. What an audience. So she said, I'm going to be with him. You can come with me. Uh, I, I raised some money for an orphanage, and he's going to dedicate the land. So I go with her, and there is this roped off area, and there's 10 chairs. And outside the rope, as you look all around, it was only heads of people. Wherever Sai Baba went, there was at least five or 600 people around. So I'm sitting in this chair, and sitting next to me is a three-star general in the, in the Indian Army. So Sai Baba comes walking in, and Indra Devi says, Sai Baba, this is Larry Payne from uh, McCall's Magazine. So I, you know, give him this. And then he turns to me. Now, this man is sitting right next to me. I am one foot away from his hand, one foot. He lifted his arm and shook his kutha, his shirt, so you could see there were no tubes, no nothing. Put his hand down and went, Pow! exploded in this man's hand, Babuti. 
right out of his fingertips. And that really happened. So this man went like this. And then he touched his forehead. He took his neck brace off and went in a full circle both ways, and he was healed. Really happened. Whoops. The next place I went was this gentleman. How many of you have seen the Netflix The Wild Wild West? It was real. And this was just before he moved to Oregon. So he was in full tilts in India, in Pune. And they loved the press. And they had like about 16 Rolls Royces parked out in front of people, donated to him. And when I came in, they were all over me. And so they, he said, you want to meet him, you know? And I said, okay. And so they said, if you're going to meet him, you have to wear his color, which was a maroon color at the time. I said, okay. So I put it on, and I get about, you know, five minutes away, and they said, would you like to be initiated? And if you're initiated, you have to wear a string around your neck with this picture. And I thought about what my mother would think. <laughs> if I came home with that picture around my neck of this girl, and I politely refused. <laughs> then I went to the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandra, and that's the first time I got refused for an interview. And uh, at that time, A.G. Mohan was the managing director of the Krishnamacharya Mandra, and Deskachar came out to meet me. He says, Sir, I'm sorry, my father doesn't do uh, interviews. And um, he said, but if you want to wait for two weeks, he said, uh, you know, he'll, maybe he'll meet you. So I took lessons with A.G. Mohan. And um, uh, the last week, Deskachar gave me a couple lessons. And then his father came out. Krishnamacharya was five foot one. But he seemed like he was a giant. He walked around in Jalandara Banda, pulled his energy in. So he walks out. And I didn't know the tradition of touching people's feet. So I just put my hands like this. And he looked at me like, who in the mm are you? He turned around and walked away. And that was the end of the meeting. So for the next year, I wrote letters to Deskachar and asked if I could study with him personally. And he said, yes. And then I think he learned something about my practical background. And he said, would you do a tribute to my father in America? I've always wanted this to happen. And I said, yes, of course. So then he brought me in to meet his father under different circumstances. And he had broken his hip and he refused surgery. So he was in a bed with all these props, pulling himself around, reciting all these texts that he had memorized. And Deskachar taught me how to come in, keep my eyes on him, touch his feet, all these things. And the minute I came in with that kind of respect, his eyes lit up. He, he had a big smile on his face. And then when Descartes told him I was going to do the tribute, he did a ceremony for me. 20-minute ceremony from Krishnamacharya. It was amazing. And I came home and I started my yoga center, Samatha. And this January will be the 40th year of Samatha. And So partnering with universities, getting yoga therapy in more hospitals, getting yoga therapy in more health centers, getting yoga therapy in more integrative health programs. That's my presentation. Thank you. Standing on the